Welcome back to Switched to Linux. And today we're going to have another look at Solus, the new version dropped just a little bit ago. And so I wanted to do a quick look at it. This has always been a distribution that I've liked quite a bit. Uh, it's one that I have run uh, in longer term tests in the past. There's a lot going for it. It's a brand new Linux distribution, not based on anything else. And so uh, they've done a lot of good customizations to it. They're also the distribution behind the Budgie desktop environment, which I do find to be one of my favorite desktop environments. So that is really good going for it. On the downside, Solus has not had a lot of packages available, but it does make flat packs available to install. And with the advent of either flat packs or snaps or app images, you can still do a pretty good job of getting almost all of the software you need without having to worry about what's actually in the curated repos. That being said, I still prefer the curated repos rather than relying on the third party tools because there is some risk of man in the middles. There is some risk of uh, malware being introduced. There is some risk of uh, tracking stuff being put into the flat pack that uh, isn't necessarily audited by the distribution itself. And so those are things to keep in mind. Now, of course, the other thing about Solus is they had a really rocky couple years. Uh, 4.3 was released almost two months or two years ago. In fact, if I remember correctly, I believe it was um, uh, two years ago. They had a little bit of an upset. The original project developer left. And uh, then they had this big outage at the beginning of this year, if you remember the big outage. So they did this blog post here talking about the average outages and what caused it. Basically, it was caused by the fact that their entire website and entire infrastructure was on a physical server at MIT. And uh, the problem with that, running just a physical server at MIT, is that um, uh, one person only one person could access things and this happened in like January, February and uh, it, there were some issues going down and it caused a giant server infrastructure. They attempted to get things up and they are not um, successfully getting up there uh, these days. Uh, but what they've done is they have migrated to more cloud infrastructure. They are using uh, Bitwarden for their security. They are using DigitalOcean to uh, host their servers. So multiple people now have the ability to get in and manage the websites, the software, and things like that. And then moving forward, they have put in enough changes to make sure stuff like that doesn't happen again. So that is what they have been doing, and that's why they had a really rocky year and why we hadn't seen a new Solus release for a couple of years. But the new version is out. And you can head on over to their download page, getsol.us slash download. And uh, there are a few different options. Of course, their flagship is the Budgie. They are the ones who have created the Budgie desktop. And so if you want the best vanilla experience of Budgie, Solus is definitely the place to get that. They also have a GNOME version. And uh, this one uh, just basically has vanilla GNOME on it. They have a Mate version and a Plasma. Now, I'm going to mention here, and we'll get more into it in a bit, Mate is going to be depreciated. So this is going to be the last release with a Mate version. They are going to be releasing an XFCE, and this has to do with Wayland support. So this is an interesting little side discussion. I debated whether or not I should talk about it, but let's go ahead and just uh, uh, get into the notes, and then eh, we'll get into that just a little bit. So here, of course, are your four versions. We have general uh, default applications, Firefox 114, LibreOffice 7.5, Thunderbird 102. And so we have the latest up-to-date software on each of those. As far as audio and video playback, they indicate their applications. Um, uh, Rhythmbox for audio, except for uh, Plasma that has Elisa. And uh, Budgie and Gnome have Celluloid for video. Mate has VLC. And it looks like uh, Plasma has Hiruna. So it does have the ability to play your basic files out of the box. Of course, we'd expect nearly any Linux distribution to do that unless it's not really designed for it. We do have secure boot support. So if you are looking for uh, a distribution with secure, uh, secure boot, you have documentation for enabling it, but you can go ahead and secure your boot on your system. They have special um, uh, shipments and, and broader range of hardware, AMD, RX 76, 7900 XT, 7900 XTX cards. 
uh, Intel Arc cards, NVIDIA 40 series. These all work. They also support laptops with NVMe controllers in RAID mode. And they're supporting laptops with, um, uh, I'm not sure, is that the uh, is that Athlon Wireless? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, not up to date. I'm a, I'm not a hardware guy, as you guys know. I'm I I'm more of a FOSS software guy. I'm not a hardware dude. All right, I I can't tell you which graphics card to get. I don't know. I my graphics card came from Best Buy. Okay, <laughs> what is it? I I vaguely know. Um, Mesa upgraded to 23, and uh, so we have a few extra things in there. And then, of course, they have the detailed information. Now, we're going to be looking at the budgie version here. Uh, they just have some bug uh, fixes and cleanups. Uh, I really am liking the new version of Budgie. Some new additions have been put into it that I do really like. And so it is definitely becoming better. I, I haven't liked it when it was a little bit more raw, but they're putting in things like they didn't used to have a power um, on the menu like a power button to turn the computer off. You had to have a panel widget. And if you took the panel widget off, you didn't have a way to shut down your computer without like booting up a terminal and issuing the, the halt command, you know. Uh, that's now fixed. They put the system settings on the menu on this new version. So, so many more good basic improvements just to make Budgie feel so much more mature. And it looks great now as well. Uh, of course, it always looked great. But uh, we have some extra things. Here's a little bit about the GNOME and you you can read about these on this website. This uh, release page will be linked in the description. Here is the planned depreciation of Mate. So this is where I'll get into this just a little bit. This has to do with Wayland support. Solace basically runs Wayland. It, I don't even know if you can get into it with X. Maybe the GNOME version you can. On Budgie you can't. And their problem is what they say is that the Mate strategy for Wayland uh, is inadequate. This is possibly why they've never supported Cinnamon. <laughs> Non-existent. But let this be a warning. Uh, as much as I'm not on the, we, everyone must jump to Wayland right now because X is way out of date, I am not in that camp. X still works, and it works well, and it works everywhere, except budgie um and so i'm not necessarily on the team i am on the team to say we have to get wayland going if for no other reason than to have a diversification in compositors we have to do that and uh, there will come a time that wayland is definitely mature enough to support everything and on that day I will probably switch to Wayland first myself, but right now I still have too many applications that just don't work as well under Wayland. So uh, I'm okay with, with Linux Mint and not having a strategy, but let this be a warning to Mint. Um, I, don't I can't find any roadmaps published for Cinnamon. I know that there's some of the packages that are putting in have a little bit of Wayland support, but I would really like to see a Cinnamon plan to include Wayland and I completely get that the next version of Linux Mint's not going to have Wayland and I'm not even asking for that but I am asking to have a little bit of community uh, communication with the community to say this is what we're doing and this is kind of our implementation strategy because we're seeing Mate which has a Wayland support strategy being booted out of Solace because of lack of Wayland support. So let that be a, um, a warning. But they do mention here XFCE's Wayland project, uh, a Wayland roadmap is competent and good. And so they are going to be releasing an XFCE version with the option to uh, convert your Mate uh, upgrades into XFCE upgrades. Although if you're doing that type of thing, I'd probably recommend you save your data and just rebuild a new system. If <laughs> my, my personal humble opinion let that be the case and then here's your plasma again just have some some updates uh, so they have some upstream uh, notes of course plasma is shipping with 527 and uh, that's what you get so that is what we are seeing and now what we would like to do is we would like to boot into the uh, system itself just to have a look at what this is going to look like and this code name is harmony so let's go ahead and head on over to the desktop as it continues to boot up. And we are running this on my virtual box. Uh, the first thing is during the install, it did not let me choose a short password, which I like to do on my 
uh, on my uh, virtual machine tests, other than virtual machines that are using for some form of production value. Uh, so I don't like that. I could just go in there and probably change it in the terminal, but uh, let that be what it is. I came in here and pushed all of the, uh, the updates. We did get a pop-up. There were some updates to do, and uh, I, uh, I held my breath and crossed my fingers. If you'll remember, if you were a long-term user of Solace, you'll remember about I don't know, I'd say about five or so years ago, Solace, um, Solace systems were imploding if you tried to run the update from the software center. Of course, if you are trying to run it from a terminal, which they don't have the uh, terminal hotkey there, um, this uses EO package. So it's a little bit different. So you're just going to do EO package upgrade. Of course, I need to do that as a pseudo user. So it's not using your app or your Pac-Man. Uh, it is using... Uh, this system here and so you can see that it's looking at saying oh everything is up to date so of course you can uh, look at your help guide for what EO package works here so you can add remove uh, add repos remove things auto remove stuff it does actually have a feel very very much like uh, apt it almost feels almost exactly like apt so if you've been used to using apt it's probably going to work out well for you uh, here is your uh, Raven menu. Of course, they've just made it look slicker. I really like this. I mean, th this is something if I weren't running Cinnamon on some other systems, I might definitely try and run a budgie. I think it'd probably meet all my needs. If you're playing some form of music, then you'll you'll get a new uh, a new app over here um, with uh, just a basically a streamlined audio app. But you can swap out all of your uh, devices and such over here. So if you want to go ahead and uh, do that, you can uh, certainly uh, do all those things from the budgie menu out of the box these days. Now, the other thing I had mentioned is they did finally put the power button down here. Woohoo! That might have been there for a couple versions. I'm not sure. But the latest version puts your budgie desktop settings and your main system settings over here. Now, that has always been a point of contention with Budgie is having two separate settings. So where do you go for them? At least they're both right here on the menu so you can see which they are. Uh, would it be good if they integrated these together? Eh, probably. And there's actually another settings on this thing as well, the onboard settings as well. So we got all sorts of settings all over the place. Uh, so that is one of the downsides of Budgie. You kind of got to know where things are. Of course, being based on GNOME, then uh, this is your basic GNOME settings panel. You'll recognize it from over there. It has all the hardware information, basically everything relating to the background of the system itself. You can see here we're running Solace. We're running six gigs of RAM. I uh, see our processor there, the graphics. And Budgie version is 10.7.2. OS name is Solace 4.4 Harmony. Oh, it is using... X11. Okay, I'm completely confused now. I completely thought this was Wayland. I'm totally confused now. Or is it? I don't know. Uh, but it does tell me it's using X. Okay. Um, that's news to me. And uh, yeah, we're going to get rid of Mate because it doesn't support Wayland. We're going to ship this with Wayland. And I did look on the login screen. There is not a way to select Wayland, apparently. So, yeah. Uh, so I guess I was wrong with information. Somebody can yell at me in the comments about that. That's cool. Uh, Linux 6.3.12. Uh, so we do have a very up-to-date Linux kernel. Now, everything relating to the desktop itself is going to be in your budgie desktop settings. This is going to be the widgets on your Raven menu, your panel. Now, one thing you'll notice is on my panel, you may have seen this. This is something that's uh, maybe it's been here for a couple versions. I haven't looked at budgie and a few versions directly but this is a new task panel this was one of those the task list thing this is one of the things that i did i wanted to see and i don't remember if it's been there in the past um so there's that of course we still don't have like our quick launch options uh but um at least we have uh we have a little bit of stuff so you can see just clicking this is doing that i think i have to um in order to get a second window on that, I'd actually have to come over into my icon task lists and allow a, a launch a middle click to launch a new window. I'd have to do something like that to get a second window launched. Um, even that, did that work? I don't know. Maybe I might need to restart the system. Okay, there it goes. Now it's now it's giving me new versions. There we are. Uh, now it's going. So I don't like that, but that's okay. The task list is there. Although it stacks on top of each other, I like the task list. I don't like it stacking, and unfortunately, there's no settings to change that. So 
whatever. Uh, I thought, is there a panel setting over here to do that? Eh, I didn't see any um, anything in that. So there you have it. But you can actually go ahead and adjust everything on the uh, panels over here. Here's the widgets on your Raven menu over here. So this is our calendar. We have our sound input, our sound output, excuse me, our sound input, and then any media controllers. And there are other widgets you can add to this as well. Not a whole lot. I guess we can add our, our usage monitor as well. There you go. So if you want to see how your usage is doing. So you can see we're using 13% of our RAM uh, and 1% of our CPU. So this thing is working pretty snappy. Here's your onboard preferences, the third settings inside of your uh, settings there. So here's just uh, basically window preferences and such like that. Uh, here's some themes. Is this basically kind of like your, um, almost resembles like your uh, your GNOME tweaks. Uh, so that's kind of what we have over there. Overall, the system does work uh, pretty well. I have, uh, even when I've run it in the past, other than that time of imploding itself on the uh, system upgrades in the um, GUI, which hasn't been a problem for a long time. It's just, you know, those of us like we don't want to get into self-driving cars because we experience the blue screen of death in Windows 95 enough times. Eh, you know, you can understand why I might want to do my updates in the terminal. Uh, but you can see it doesn't have an overwhelming amount of software. It has probably just enough uh, just to kind of see what all is going on. So there's what we have, and I want to have a brief look at the, there's hardware drivers. Let's go ahead and do that. No drivers were found for your system, so no, um, no custom drivers. As far as installing software in the GUI, we do have a software center. As I said, the amount of software that you will find is a little bit more limited than some, uh, than some distros. So you can kind of see this is about what we have to work with. Not a ton, but we do actually have flat packs. You can install flat packs, and I think uh, flat pack is installed, uh, but I don't think there are any. Let's see what we have. So flat pack list gives us nothing. Uh, let's see if there's snap. So it looks like no snaps are installed. So snap is set up, and um, uh, flat pack is set up. Let's look at what that warning happens to say. Snap warnings. Uh, warning, you're about to use a snap. Oh, burn. All right. Uh, so snap uh, app armor service is disabled. Okay. So some applications will likely not start. So we want to enable your snap uh, app armor to enable that. So if you want to run snaps, you might want to do that. That's kind of odd that that's disabled um, on system setup. That's very interesting. Um, so snaps are enabled here, although I don't think think we have uh i don't think the software repository is searching for him let's do my good old search for audacity because that's going to tell me where audacity is going to come from so over here we have just a change log over here and i'm not seeing anything about where it's coming from uh so my guess is this is just curated inside of the uh rep the EO package repositories, just your basic repositories. So I'm not seeing any option, which one do I want to install? Whereas if we do a search for a flat packs or for snaps, you will find a version of a DAS in each of those. Uh, so that is, let's see, there's checking updates every hour. And here's what's installed. Now, they do have these third parties. Uh, before I get to the third parties, one of the downsides of it is, while it does have some Snap and Flatpak support, it doesn't actually seem to have any stores uh, that are going to give us, uh, like any applications that are actually going to give us um, your uh, your Flatpaks out of the box. So, uh, in other words, there's no GUI interface for Snaps, no GUI interface for Flatpaks. Let's go ahead and search for uh, simple screen recorder i like this one because there's a few different versions in the snap store i disagree with it but oh look at that no simple screen recorder at all so if i happen to want a gui for flat pack management and things i have a few options uh one is uh, i could install the gnome software center uh, which would be an additional software center in addition to this one um, or if you're using snaps, for example, um, you can just come into your terminal and do, uh, I think it's, I think it's snap install snap store. I think this is it. And it's going to give, ask us for that. Make sure I enter that right. 
And so there it is. It's downloading the Snap Store. And so the Snap Store gives us a GUI interface that allows us to search and install any snaps from the GUI. Now, there is no specific application like this for flat packs, but what you can do is you can install like the GNOME software store and you can install the flat pack uh, integration for the software store. Those would be done in the terminal. Let's see if we can actually search the up the GNOME store here. Hmm, maybe we can. I don't know. Let's see. All right. Uh, I don't see it there anyway. We'll wait for the terminal to be done to see see what we can do. Uh, in the meantime, though, the uh, the third party software these are really nice for those that want them. Uh, so this gives us things that you'd find in in uh, you'd want to do like Ubuntu. You'd add a PPA to them, but if you need things like Spotify and Skype and things like this. Um, now, I don't know if these are flat packs. I have no idea what is being used to install these guys or not. But uh, uh, I think, I, I, last time I thought anyway, they were coming from things like, um, uh, just like extra repositories that are added. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install Spotify and see if this installs Spotify as a flat pack or what it is. Who knows? But let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll come back when this is done. All right, so Spotify is done. Let's go ahead and boot up another terminal here. And then let's do flat pack list. And still nothing. So yeah, that's uh, these guys here are installing by extra repos that are added to the system. And for some reason, our Snap Store has been stuck at 93% for like the last five minutes. So I'm not even sure I really want to finish that process anyway. It's over here doing all sorts of weird Ubuntu-y things in the background. Ooh, how terrifying. Uh, but there is your look at, the, um, uh, at your Solace. Overall, really nice, good system. I like the blend of software and the system settings. I like how... How it looks, the look and the feel is definitely good. And so uh, it does support the flat packs and such out of the box. And that's actually good. But um, uh, overall, we don't have a way to actually easily add those in the GUI. That would be nice. And um, what was the other gripe I was talking about? Yeah, I don't know. Is it Wayland or X? <laughs> don't correct me down below. I was under the impression it was fully Wayland, especially since they're uh, Matei Wayland um, um, uh, issues here. So there is my look at Solace 4.4. Let me know your thoughts. Are you a regular Solace user? Is this something you want to look into in the future? And which is your favorite desktop environment that they ship? Are you mad that uh, Mate is going to be going away? Uh, or are you excited about that? Or is that indifferent? Let me know all those in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.